Good evening my fellow Mayo monkeys and welcome back to Command Economy 4, my beloved, where today we'll be playing as the free market fundamentalist himself, Javier Millet the first of Argentina. My goal for this campaign is to read the world of technocratic tyranny by introducing the Swiss, sorry, I mean the World Economic Forum, to the daily life of a celestial body. So join me while I pretend that democracy is a god that succeeds sometimes, edge my channel termination for the second time this year and give a concerning amount of people a crash course in high caliber acupuncture. Also, please like and subscribe or if you're based, give me shekels and I'll put your name in the credits. Okay, you've waited long enough. Roll the brain rolls. So, to clarify, my goal for this campaign is to drop a nuclear bomb on Davos where the Grand Wizards of the WEF congregate. But since I'll be playing as a libertarian, I have to set some rules so as to avoid the dreaded RP fail. Please ignore that nuking a city is probably an NAP violation. The aforementioned rules are never going above volunteer only because conscription is an NAP violation, never going above civilian economy because a smaller share of consumer goods factories implies that the market is increasingly controlled by the government, and I would sooner rope max than deprive a single Argentinian of his Funko Pops. And lastly, never going below export focus. Now, I should probably be on free trade to be 100% libertarian, but that would make the campaign difficult, and staying on export focus can be justified if you take some of Millet's statements about trade with China out of context, so we'll go with that. And now that my three LARP commandments are finalized, here's the plan. Liberate these countries, get a collab government on Brazil to expand my pool of 8 and white boys available to die in my wars, kill Brazil, naval invade Spain, because the allies hate strong independence and black women. And then join the Axis, kill Vichy France to get a border with Mordor, and finally let her rip. So, now that I've committed every available flavor of incitement, bienvenido a Argentina. All right, item one on the list is to remedy the shocking disdain for arbitrageurs displayed by the current Argentine government, which naturally I will alleviate by hiring a groiper, because nothing screams anarcho-capitalism like state control over railroads and commerce. And would you look at that, after a year of salivating over very youthful anime girls on Twitter, Santiago Derqui has garnered the support of the entire Argentine population of a German ancestry. But unluckily for them, after a swift coup, the anti-Semitic leader of the Gamerist party is replaced with a final Semite. And the party pledged to kill all the bankers is replaced with a pledge to destroy one bank. Though to be fair, it's the worst one. And boom! What a curiously angular dollar sign. Anyway, our glorious leader Millet Jack has risen to the throne. And his first act as president is to abolish Uruguay, the country. Ah, the GDP grows, which is necessary to make up for our <laughs> hacking wholesome chungus economy law. But to be able to reach our goal of 1 grillion dead weftards, we're gonna need the line to go up at a rate faster than the West's fall speed. So next on the circumcision block are Paraguay, Chile, Bolivia and Peru. Paraguay is easy since it's just an uncomfortably warm forest. Chile is easy because the AI has no priorities. Bolivia is easy because their border is too big. But the prospect of invading Peru makes an eternity of infernal torture seem quite pleasant by comparison. But luckily, I have a plan. You see, Chile starts with a fairly sizable navy, and since I just had it uh, repossessed, we'll have no trouble naval invading the Peruvian coast, thus sparing the lives of many a precious light skin who would otherwise have perished in a foreign land. But it's still going to suck though, so strap in. The devil shivers when an A10 Germanic nice guy loses his cool. Alright, wonderful. I've reached my arbitrary goal, and would you look at that, the collaboration government on Brazil is done. And you know what that means? It means it's time for you to like and subscribe, as well as hit the bell and send me $30,000 on PayPal because I'm so based and epic. But nah, the plan is to advance along the coast with one segment of my army and use the other segment for various naval landings to minimize attrition and facilitate extermination by hastening their capitulation. And uh, no cap. Vargas is going to have to do some serious ibuprofen maxing when I'm done with him.
So, with all the relevant parts of South America unified under Mammon, I've set my sights on Spain, which is where we'll make our grand return to the continent of our ancestors. Fortunately, my navy mug Spain's navy all the way to Agartha and back, so landing won't be a problem, and quite frankly, we have no time to lose. So let the blacktivities commence. Seven months and hundreds of thousands of physically removed Spaniards later, the anti-socialist crusade has established a beachhead in Europe and has significantly improved the average Spaniard's position on the Fitzpatrick scale. Oh, haha, <laughs> did I say improved? Oh, silly me, race is just a number. Anyway, we're now just one country away from our goal, but since the country in question is guaranteed by the Germans and we don't have the firepower to beat them, we're going to have to join the Axis before we invade. Yeah, hello, I'd like to join your faction so that I can annex your satellite state with impunity, is that cool? Huh, that was easy. Since Vichy France is the epitome of a paper tiger, a simple battle plan along with a naval invasion of the uh, core French territories located in North Africa will be enough to knock them out. While waiting for our voluntarily funded propagandists to justify the impending war, I've started researching airplanes and nuclear reactors so that we'll be able to fulfill our destiny when the time comes. Oh, I uh, wonder who that is. Hi! Alright, Switzerland is now on our border, but since they're democratic, declaring war on them will all but guarantee a war with the allies that I cannot be ours to fight, so the war will have to wait until I have researched nukes, so that I can glass them immediately and then promptly turn off my computer and go touch grass. Unfortunately, nukes are several years away, so I have to find something to do in the meantime. Oh, is that the Soviets I see? Worth it. But it sure wasn't cheap, as our pool of volunteers has all but dried up during the war. Luckily, we managed to snag a fairly large Russian puppet state, the manpower of which we can use to fill our ranks. Pay no mind to their methods, though. Also, hmm, I wonder how our ally Germany is doing. Oh. How about I put them out of their misery? Okay, now I will justify on Switzerland. Finally. We're so back. Good evening. Despite my best efforts, YouTube has approved me for tier 1 monetization. I am compelled by my ancestral memory to capitalize on this. But regrettably, the revenue split is about as bad as Swedish municipal tax rates, and I don't pay those, so why should I pay YouTube? The simple remedy is to use these fine services instead. Ko-Fi is primarily for one-time donations and they take no fees. A single donation nets you a dopamine droplet in the form of your name in the credits of my videos. Patreon is for monthly donations, for as long as I'm allowed to stay on. And there are three tiers. Now, this form is draining, so I will make this quick. Give me all your money!